Warning! This video utilizes a methodology which may cause any experienced Blender users or 3D artists watching to have kittens, feel uncontrollable rage, or sigh loudly. The techniques demonstrated in this video are utilized specifically for creating Uma friendly legacy models quickly and easily. They are not recommended for experienced users. So, hello and welcome to uh, part 4 of Uma 2.0 and Blender 2.76 creating clothing from scratch. Um, Anyone who's a professional Blender user, sorry, I'm just going to say that now. So, aims for this video, we're going to prepare our model for a UV with um, appropriate seaming applied to our model. We're going to save and export our UV layout to an image, and then we're going to actually save and export our model to Unity. Uh, a quick reminder of our workflow, we are now at the last bit. So we're UVing, uh, and then we're going to be exporting uh, our duplicate as uh, FBX with ASCII 6.1 formatting and uh, forward Z. Very quickly, I'm going to explain some information about UVs. So if you don't need that, you can skip uh, the next five and a half minutes and we'll jump straight to actually creating the seams, creating the UV and exporting. So here we go. So you're probably wondering what all this business is about UVs. And I'm just gonna give you a very, very quick explanation. Now, we're gonna take the humble cube. So here's our little cube. Um, and obviously it looks very cube-like or cuboid-like anyway at least. But the problem is, is that when we think of images, they normally come in separate little flat 2D files. So we've got 2D, for example, bitmap over here. Whereas over here we've got, for example, a 3D object file. Now this particular 2D file might have a smiley face on it, uh, might even have something like an arrow, etc. And we want it to end up appearing on our 3D model. So the question is, how on earth do we get a flat 2D bitmap onto a 3D model? Now, it would be safe to sort of like suggest perhaps we could put the bitmap directly onto one face. And whilst that would make sense uh, in case of this particular cube, it wouldn't make sense for more advanced objects, like say, for example, we have our lovely little human over here. In this particular case, if we were to do it on every last single face, as you'll have noticed in Blender, there are myriads and myriads of faces, thousands in some particular cases, or even tens of thousands, if you have a computer powerful enough. So we needed an alternative method. And so what we do, think back to your school days, you might remember something called a net. A net is when you unwrap a 3D object and lay it flat. So the net of a cube would look something like these blue squares over here on our 2D bitmap. A UV essentially tells the 3D object the coordinates to look between our bitmap for each particular vertex. So now our UV will look at the bitmap and then take the data from that bitmap and go, well, this particular square here with the smiley face was for this face. And then this one here was to wrap around uh, on, well, someone with uh, good geometric skills will know actually that should be on the back side, but never mind that. And this essentially is what a UV does. It tells the 3D object where to uh, find its relative face on a 2D bitmap. So if we have a more complex person over here, we can then look at a 2D bitmap and find the various parts, hence why they look rather curved. The problem is knowing where to actually create the UV from. So what we do is on our 3D object, we mark these things called seams. So uh, if I undo that one, actually that would be terrible placement. We would mark a seam, for example, here and here and here, and here, and here. So we would know now that those two would unfold and would be next to each other. Meanwhile, we might have this come here, so we know that this top face would unwrap with the face attached on the back. And everything would unwrap quite nicely. So if we have, uh, I'll just sketch a 3D object like this. Again, 3D cuboid, this time I'm just going to 
kind of indicate where everything is and then i'm going to do the seams in a pink this time so if we have a seam here 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 and this might seem a bit redundant but it will all make sense if we have a look at this so here are all our seams uh, oh and one more along the back down there so now what will happen is is that it will look at this particular uv and it will go well okay so this face here comes first so that unwraps to here and then we have this face which is connected and it's only connected on one side so this face will unwrap here and then this face is connected to this face at the back now if we notice there are no seams on this face at the back which means that it is connected to this top square here it's connected to this bottom square down here and it's connected to this one over the far side and so now we have an unwrapped UV that's how essentially UV translates and we end up as I said with more complex things like getting our man over onto this so we end up with for example here depending on how you do it if we were to draw a seam literally along his edge that probably still wouldn't be sufficient we'd end up with some sort of weird thing that would look something like this unwrapped and the head would look something like this and then the body would unwrap in some sort of weird fashion something like it. you get the idea but the nice bit is that we can actually seam into quadrants as well and i'll show you a bit more about that as we go so you can make it a lot easier to read and what we're going to do is we're going to produce a uv onto a bitmap so i hope that's a suitable introduction there for you on uvs so i'm going to make this bit as pain-free as possible um i'm not going to do full seaming as part of this but i am going to show you what happens so very quickly first of all we want to make sure we expand this over here and we're going to change this to uh, if we click down here UV image editor now we've got a trench coat here and what we don't want to do is produce a UV that's unusable because we're going to be editing it by hand we're not going to be doing it in blender and that sound you can hear is the sound of a million uh, 3d artists crying out at the same time in pain what we're going to do we're going to look over here at our UV extractor first of all. We're going to click the little plus. Create new image. We're going to call it Trench Mail UV. Just so we know what it's for. The generator type will be left blank. We're going to click OK. Now, with this, you'll notice that likely is not already there'll be some form of generated UV. It will either be a hang up from uh, Uma Human Mail or it might be a smart UV project which looks something like this. We don't do that because now we have absolutely no idea what it is we're working with. Like no idea what we're gonna be painting later on, but it's gonna be pot luck. So what we're gonna do is, first of all, move your mouse over the UV over here. And then we're going to make, oh, make sure it's in trench UV first. Um, we're going to hit P. And it won't look like it's done anything, but you should notice in the bottom left over here, it now says pin. This is for setting up pins, but what we're going to do is we're going to clear all the old UV pins. So if I just highlight that quickly, it should say we're clearing pinning for the whole selection. So any pins made in the old UV are now gone. So any new UV we make will be based on whatever we do. To make uh, seams for a UV, first of all, bear in mind you need to unwrap it second of all you need to make it so it's easy to paint what I've done here is I've made all of my inner lining for my coat uh, seamed so if I go into uh, oh no solid over here you'll see that the inner collar is seamed uh, everything where the lining would be is seamed uh, I've also done the arm separate and I've also done a dividing line like this around here uh, the reason why there's a divider here is because bear in mind that we need to make sure it can unwrap into a flat state. If we try to unwrap this part of the sleeve, um, it wouldn't unwrap flat whatsoever. So once we've marked our seams, what we do, I'll just show you how, but I won't do it all the way. 
select uh, the part you want to seam, press space, type in seam, and then mark seam, and it will mark it. Uh, I'm not going to do too much with it now. We've already got this here. Um, but do obviously take the time, make sure you're happy with the seaming. Maybe think about doing something similar to me. So make sure it can unwrap that. Now, boring bit aside, press A. So we select everything, or a couple of times if you have to deselect. We're now going to press U, and we're going to tell it to unwrap, and it will unwrap the mesh of the object based on our seams. And then we should have, hopefully here, as you can see, inner lining, outer of the coat, sleeve one, sleeve two. Yay! Nice and easy. Um, you can change the margin between each bit. I would leave it about 0.1 just for ease. Um, but what we're not going to do here, which will upset everyone, is we are not painting this in Blender. What we're actually going to do is we're going to click Image, or UV even, and then click Export UV Layout. So we're going to paint onto the UV Layout later. Um, click that, and make sure you extract it somewhere sensible. So what I've done, I've already run through this once uh, as a trial run. So click Assets. And then I've made a folder with this button here called Uma Clothing. Uh, and I made another folder called Textures. And then Trench UV Map just there. Okay. And then once you do that, click Export UV Layouts. Uh, in fact, actually, that's a terrible name. I should have called it UV Mail, but never mind. Uh, we can rename it later. That's our UV done, ready for texturing. Yay! Now we've only got one thing left to do. What we're going to do is we're going to do all scenes here. We're going to select none with A and we're going to close this. Our UV is done, so that's ready for texturing. So we just need to get this out, but not on its own, nor with everything else. Bit of a problem. So what we're going to do is make sure everything is deselected uh, in our window. Make sure that we haven't got anything extra selected in our hierarchy, any hangups. And again, we're going to go back to visible layers, but this time we are going to go into object mode and we're going to show two layers. So again, shift, left click, and we're going to show the rig layer. So if you're working with a female, select the rig above the female. And if you're working with male, select above the male. We're going to select the male rig first for no real reason other than it's easier. So make sure we got it. And then we're going to select the male trench coat as well by pressing shift and then clicking it. There should only be two things highlighted. Okay, make sure you unhide your human male if you've done so, just to make sure he's not selected. This is what we're exporting, just those two bits. Now, if you try and export normally, uh, file export FBX and extract it to a directory, say assets, Uma clothing, model, Uma human male trench coat. You can tell I've done this uh, before earlier. If you try and export it as is now, it will go horribly, horribly, horribly wrong. You'll find that the male uh, rig is also exported alongside the male body, and there's more content in there than you actually need. And it won't work. It won't even be compatible with Uma in its current state. What we need to do is we need to come down here to export FBX because Uma doesn't actually support FBX 7.4, it only supports FBX 6.1. Um, notice it says warning depreciated and no more maintained, which should fill you with tons of confidence. So we're going to click that, and then we're going to select selected objects, because we are only going to be exporting our trench coat and our rig. It needs to obviously be rigged to work with everything else. We also want to change the forward we're going to change it to Z forward instead of negative Z forward. Now, for those of you that don't know what that means, don't worry too much about it. But the one thing we're going to do as well is we're going to deselect animation. So we're not exporting uh, mouth movements that are actually already in Uma Blender. So we're going to streamline this to keep it nice and simple. So all we get coming out is our trench coat and the rig for the trench coat. Once we do that, export FBX once we're happy getting paranoid here is that done yeah uh, what you can do as well is make it a preset uh, for later on if you wish to um, 
probably a good idea. But once you've exported, it's done. So you should be able to go back into Unity. And here's one I made earlier. Should just re-import it. So we have in Uma Clothing our model. Uh, key things to make sure. Scale factor needs to be set to 100. It just does. Um, the rig needs to be set to legacy, which may again seem completely redundant because it's humanoid. It's actually not. I'll explain why later on, but suffice to say, this mesh actually never gets rendered by itself in the game. It's about the way Uma works. I'll explain this in a future video. Uh, animations, deselect import animations just to be safe. Not that there should be any. Click apply. So once you've got legacy, scale factor 100, this is actually ready to go. So you should have the model here, should have the texture here, and you should have a material set here, which is probably going to make you cry, but we'll deal with that later on. Um, on that note, that is actually about it for this video. Uh, we'll deal with the rest of this later on. Cool.